let's look at uh, another example. And we're going to, since we've seen these stats before, they're, they're going to be a little easier this time. So we're going to look at the MNIST data, digit data set. So these are the, the, the handwritten digits on postal codes, I think they're derived from, right, that we're trying to classify into the 10 digits class. OK, so as in the Hinders data set, we need to, we need to give the data to Torch. So actually, the MNIST data is already sort of prepackaged for, for Torch, or almost prepackaged. So we can find it with one of the, um, the, those libraries. This Torch Vision data sets has the MNIST data already for us. We're going to do a slight bit of preprocessing. Um, actually, no, oh, I'm sorry. That's preprocessing for the CIFAR. So we, again, make a data module that tells um, Torch how to load in the data. Uh, so what this is what will happen in um, this sort of specifies what an epoch looks like. There are 256 per batch. So an epoch goes through you know, each of the data points up at, with a chunk of 256 until every data point has been visited once, and then the epoch is finished. OK. Um, Let's specify our model now. So we're going to do now just a slightly more complicated model, but um, it will be uh, it'll be a two-layer model. And oh, I think I, I I missed one important line in the hitters example that I'm going to emphasize now. All of these. So again, we're going to make a subclass of the nn.module. Here we're going to make it for the MNIST data. We, you can name this whatever you like, but probably useful to name it something related to what you're doing. Um, and there's this line here, this super line, uh, that we also had for the hitters data. So what this does is, well, we inherit from the module class. And we only define here two methods, right? The, this init method and the forward method. But this nn.module has many other methods. And that's, of course, because this you know, torch has to use this to fit the model. So it has mm -hmm. to know how to do many other things. And, um, so this, uh, this, what we're doing here is actually calling the init method of module on this newly created MNIST example. So this is actually necessary for every time, every time you make a subclass of nn.module. So the syntax is the same throughout all our examples. We give it's the super function, which is a built-in function, the class name, self. And self is a keyword here. It's the, ar the first argument to every method. And we call the init method of well, actually, nn.module on self. So I just I mean, you'll have to do that for all your examples. Otherwise, you'll have a problem. OK, so let's get to the heart of specifying our, our layers. Um, we're going to do two layers. Um, so the layers are going to be specified much like our single layer. Um, so this chunk here is very similar to what we saw for the, the hitters data set. Uh, we're just going to now compose two layers. So we'll store this as layer one. A similar output is layer two. And then we'll compose them with the sequential call again. So features first go into layer one, come out from layer two, and then they get mapped um, to 10. And that's because we have 10 digits here. So just to get the idea, the images are 28 by 28 grayscale images. Mm -hmm. So in the layer one, we see the 28 by 28. Um, that's the dimension of the input. And, and the hidden layer's got 256 units, right? And we're using a dropout of yep. 0.4. Yep. And then the second layer, of course, must take 256 as the input, that dimension of the input layer, because that's the previous hidden layer. Yep. And then it's got 128 hidden units. And then, and to specify the dropout. And then the final layer, the output layer, goes from the 128 hidden units to the 10 dimensional output. Um, layer because there's ten digits, right? Yes. And we use a softmax. Yeah, there'll be a we know we don't have the softmax here. The loss function is actually going to have the softmax yeah. applied to it. But that's similar to the regression example where this just describes, you know, how features get transformed into outputs, and then the loss relates that to the outcome. So, Jonathan, we can see how easy it would be if you wanted to just add a few more hidden layers. Right? We just basically replicate this kind of code and put in the numbers we want. Yes, and yeah, it's really yeah. straightforward. You could even, if you wanted to have ten, you didn't. If you wanted ten layers, you could even do in a for loop. You don't even have to re repeat the same code. And we'll do something like that for the CNN. We'll have, I think, five layers or so, 
And rather than write, writing five chunks like this, we'll, we'll use Python to, yeah. to, to make it easy. So it takes a little bit of getting used to the, the, this layer, but once you've, you've got it, you can basically set up any neural network. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, this forward map, that's the key. Uh, this yeah. tells us how features get translated into, in this case, ten f the yeah. 10 scores, and that'll yeah. get tied to, to soft okay. max. Okay, so then a lot of the rest is going to be almost identical to before. Um, that part about setting up the trainer, running the and training it and etc but let's uh, let's let's uh, go quickly uh, rather a little quickly to that so we'll again we'll specify the this is instantiates the MNIST model we can look at the summary again so uh, the summary is a bit longer now because we have two layers but mm. uh, it can be read pretty similar to the headers data and we're not going to mm. spend too much time on that okay so here again we make this um, module that this argument here, classification, says take those 10 outputs and throw them into a softmax to compare it to the, the response in whatever data this thing gets fit. And again, this argument here tells, tells Tort what data will be fat, fit into the classification problem. After that, well, this is going to look similar. There'll be a lot of blue things, and we could watch them if we were running this live. Let's make a similar plot to what we had done before for uh, mean squared, mean absolute error in the hitters data. Let's let's plot this metric for accuracy for the um, the MNIST data. And again, we can see how uh, how things progress for um, the training and validate. And interestingly, the validation starts off a little higher than the training data, but um, in the end, they're they're, they're relatively comparable. Mm -hmm. But that's just luck of the draw. Yeah, yeah. It's about ninety five percent. Accuracy. Yes. Yeah. Here's a we can evaluate mm. the test accuracy about just mm. over ninety five percent. Okay. Um, so the last thing that we will not go over uh, for the MNIST data is how to fit just a very simple uh, um, multinomial regression model rather than a, a hidden um, a, a neural network model. Oh right. And Using basically the same code, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, it's so there's just no ReLU, no dropout, just a just and a no hidden layer. layer. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. that that's just um, the only thing that is different between this one and the previous one is that there was a nonlinear function to get the ten scores. Here, yeah. it's just a linear function. Yeah. And last, let's wrap up with just looking at its accuracy. It gets about ninety percent on accuracy on the test data. That's still pretty good, actually. Still pretty good. Okay.